Good morning, YouTubers. On today. So obviously what's happening here is the oil is leaking down from that filter housing onto the belt, spraying all over the airbox, kind of what we have here. So before this alternator goes kaput from all this oil leaking on it, we'll take care of this stuff right now. Go ahead and we're gonna start by pulling off the upper beauty cover. Then we're gonna move over to pulling off some of the uh, wiper cowl cabin filters and that kind of stuff so we can gain access to the Couple gaskets for our cooler and our oil filter housing. Got our filter, got our oil. Okay, so we got the cabin filters uh, out of there. We're gonna work on taking this bar out just to make it a little easier. Then we'll remove our beauty cover. Engine cover off, so now we're gonna pull some coil packs out. Undo a couple of the uh, miscellaneous hoses. We're gonna take this connector off for this guy. There's a little procedure to back the worm gear out of the valve cover. Not really a terrible job. It's pretty accessible once you have the uh, windshield cowling and that stuff out. So you just wanna be a little bit careful when you're unplugging this guy right here. If you've never Unplug the uh, BMW coil packs. Nice little clip design. You just flip this guy up like so, and then that connector will pull right off. Let's do those for all those. I'm gonna pull some of this wiring back after that. You got some uh, oxygen sensor wiring back there that's just gotta come out of that clip. go ahead and unplug the uh, oxygen sensors so we can feed our wires through the back side there okay make sure you get that injector wiring out of the way I see a couple guys do it leaving it in there it is doable leaving it in there but it's a little bit tight to get your uh, extension and ratchet down for those uh, e-torx bolts so we got the valve cover pretty clear. We're gonna go over the procedure on backing this little guy out and the worm gear. And keep in mind, there's a hose back here. Gotta squeeze those two tabs, pull it off, make sure you don't break that guy. And <clears throat> we're really getting pretty close. So this guy, we could kind of tie up close to the uh, wiper arms to get it out of the way while you're wrestling this thing out of here. Hey guys, we're moving on to taking out the Valvetronic motors. So again, a lot of people kind of uh, worried about taking this thing out, worried about calibrating it. Shouldn't really have an issue if you follow these uh, steps. So there is three bolts holding this guy on. Obviously there's one right there, one right there, and there's one on the bottom here. If you can kind of see where my light is, that hole right there. So you're gonna remove that guy from the side first. Then we are going to slowly back these guys out we're going to turn them out evenly the same on both sides so if we turn one side a half a turn we're tur going to turn the other side a half a turn okay so we got those snugged up in there right now we're going to back them out a turn or a turn and a half again make sure to do it evenly in the end here you can see there's a little hole which accepts a four millimeter allen bit we're going to put a four millimeter allen bit in there turn it counterclockwise and that's gonna help this worm gear walk itself out. So just hang on, bear with me here, and let's check it out. All right guys, once you got that breather hose off in the back, we're gonna work on taking out the uh, actual bolts that hold the valve cover on. And we're gonna get going on taking this thing off. 
All right, after wrestling it out of there, I don't think this thing has had regular oil changes, but uh, that's besides the fact here. So we're gonna go around and clean our gasket mating surface before the new one goes on here. So I suggest you guys remove this little bracket before you put the valve cover on, give you a little bit more room squeezing it in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit. All right, so she's seated on there. I found the easiest way to drop this thing in there. You got to drop that front side in first and clear that far rocker arm. Once you kind of get it in the close position, you'll notice that the spark plug tubes are very close. You might have to shift it over a couple millimeters and then it'll just literally fall right on. So now we are just going to do the, uh, the reverse of the removal and slowly, one by one, hook this puppy back up. Very important, you guys, make sure you follow the torque settings, which is 8.6 Newton meters. We got everything torqued. We're gonna hook up our, uh, the line at the back for the breather tube. And don't forget to screw on the uh, bracket on the corner that we removed to make it a little bit easier to sneak in here. Then we're going to flip our wiring over we're going to put our worm gear actuator guy back in there. All right, BMW family, she's back together. Beauty cover is not on. We are going to move over now to the oil cooler and oil filter housing. We're gonna change those. Then we're gonna give this engine bay a little bit of a bath with some degreaser. So the customer is nice and happy when he opens his hood and it's not covered in oil. All right guys, so take a look at our uh, oil cooler and oil filter housing gaskets. Those are the two we're gonna be replacing. We're gonna be removing the cooler assembly. There's a gasket behind there. And then we're gonna be removing the oil filter housing. A couple housing. E10 bolts, two up here, one in the middle of the cooler at the bottom here. You're gonna wanna remove those. That's where our first gasket's gonna sit. And then we're gonna remove our oil cap. We're gonna take our filter out and we're going to remove the oil filter housing bolted to the block. Cooler separated. We'll take our gasket out of there. There's the old one. There's our cooler. We're gonna make sure to clean up these surfaces before we put it back together. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our oil cap, take our filter out and start working on taking off the oil filter housing. So you guys make sure you use the proper uh, oil filter cap wrench to remove that cap. That's how these caps get messed up all the time. Uh, we're gonna pull this filter out. What I like to do is fill up this filter housing with some shop towels or paper towels so you can pick up that residual oil before you take it apart. Thing. It'll just minimize your mess a little bit. Three bolts for the uh, oil filter housing. One right here. We got one coming through on the back side, and then one kind of under the intake there. Little trouble with that back bolt there. Uh, it was kind of starting to almost strip with the uh, 12 point wrenches. So you know what, I ended up removing this coolant pipe here that a lot of people uh, warn you about. Very easy to break. There's an O-ring that kind of keeps that seal tight, but I wiggled it and wiggled it and wiggled it and got it out of there, no problem. As you can see. Got the filter housing just uh, bungee corded kind of out of the way. Cooler sitting here. Nice and accessible to clean up our mating surfaces. And clean up this side. Put it back together. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this uh, serpentine belt before we put this back together. I've heard uh, a lot of horror stories on these engines. When these belts break, they risk the uh, chance of getting pulled into the front crankshaft pulley and going inside the engine causing some severe engine damage. We don't want that for a cheap little part. So you're looking at a T60 on the tensioner here. We're going to get that ready. We're going to show you how to change this belt and then we're going to slap this uh, oil filter housing and oil cooler back on. Fill it up with some fresh oil. Okay guys, we got the area all nice and cleaned up. 
couple cans of engine degreaser and brake clean go a long way. Uh, that's a T60 on the tensioner and you're going to go clockwise to release tension on the belt. New belt on. Our filter housing's on. We're just going to put our gasket in for our oil cooler. Put our oil cooler on, torque the bolts up, fill this thing up with oil, baby. All right, so we washed off the splash shields underneath, make sure it's all nice and clean. It's all back together, ready to fill this up. Shout out to Mac Tools for this badass funnel set. It is sweet, makes your filling up oil stuff very neat, tidy, no more spills. Got a different adapter for all kind of brands there. Here's our oil, filling it up with some Mold Tool 6100. Let's fire it up, check it for leaks. BMW, yes. Pretty gave the engine bay a nice little detail. Runs good. Looks good. No more oil. In. Thank you guys for watching another video. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps with the algorithm. It helps with growing the page. That's what we're trying to do here. If you guys have any comments, good or bad, please drop them below. I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you very much for tuning in again, and we'll catch you in the next video.